By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at two decks that I think have... Uh, an audience. You know, one of them is an Enchantress deck, and I know that there are a lot of fans of the Fujuren Enchantress out there. So this is another one, white and green Fujuren Enchantress brew. And uh, it's it's interesting. If you love Enchantress, I'm actually a big fan of Enchantress too, then, uh, then you'll definitely like this episode. So this deck is piloted by Victor, and uh, I'm playing with a deck that's actually based upon uh, mana burn because we're going to play with mana burn today and I've built a deck around power search and I've called it dragon search and I'm playing with a lot of dragons and power search now before I go into the details of the decks before I start looking at the deck text I would first like to point out that you can also go uh, to the action straight away I know some of you do and you can do that by checking the description below there you will find several timestamps one of them reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it goes directly to the action. You can also check out the separate deck text if you want to. So it's, um, I think it's really handy. It's kind of like going through a CD, right? You can pick the track and you can choose where you want to start uh, within the video. So if that's something for you, check the description below. You can also check the description below for details about the specific rule set that we're, we are playing with today. Um, and now I'm going to continue with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of the player on the left, Victor, and we're going to look at his Fujuren Enchantress Brew. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Victor. So this is white, green, Fujuren Enchantress. And as you can see, there are a lot of enchantments in this deck. Makes sense, right? Now, in case you don't know what Fujuren Enchantress does, let me just quickly explain it to you because the whole deck is revolved around this O2 creature. So it's two green and one to cast for an O2 creature, beautiful art. And uh, what it does is for each enchantment that you cast, you get to draw a card. And as you can see, there are tons and tons of enchantments in this deck. Maybe we can kind of try to count them here. We see a full play set of Wild Groves, a full play set of Holy Strengths, really cool to see that card, a full play set of Aspect of Wolf, another favorite card of mine. So that means we've got 12 enchantments so far, and we've got three Spirit Links going up to 15, and then we've got two Sylvans and two Webs. So that means we have 19 enchantments in this deck. So there are more than enough enchantments, and that should uh, should give uh, Fijuran Enchantress plenty of chance to kind of show its strength in this deck, and I think the hardest part when you play for Journey Enchanters or play any deck revolving around a creature is kind of keeping that creature alive, keeping that creature to stick. I remember playing Enchanters decks myself, uh, I love to do it, but it's so difficult to find the perfect balance between having an Enchanters and having enough enchantments in your hand and also keeping the Fujuren Enchant uh, Enchanters alive. I think that last thing is really key, and that's going to be. Um, very, very difficult in every matchup, including in this one. So that synergy is kind of speaks for itself, right? How Fujuren Enchantress works with all the enchantments. But there are also a few other tricks in this deck. Maybe let's start with one of the obvious ones. We see two beautiful Rabbit Wombats in this deck. Two green and two to cast for an 0-1 Rabbit Wombat. And every time you, you cast an, an, uh, an enchantment on its own enchant creature, like Spirit Link or Holy Strength or Web, it gets plus two, plus two. The nice thing is that Rabbit Wombat also um, has Vigilance. You don't have to tap it when it attacks, which is actually quite unique in the color green in old school. So that is that's a pretty cool extra that Rabbit Wombat has. Now that I think about it, it would be cool to maybe combine Fijuren Enchantress, Rabbit Wombat, tons of enchantments, and Meek Stone. Like kind of make some kind of silly, silly deck. But okay, that's maybe that's a different story. You could add a Kismet in there as well, by the way, but that's a whole different story. When we're looking at the rest of this deck, we see a few really powerful creatures. We see three Urnum Jins, of course, an absolute powerhouse, but the three creatures that I find even more interesting are the three If Biff Afrit. So If Biff Afrit is a card also from Arabian Nights. It's a 3-3 flyer, and I believe it's two green and two to cast. And it has a built-in hurricane effect, and that's pretty unique. Everybody can pay one green, including the opponent, if they have green uh, mana. Uh, they can tap one green, and what happens? Everything, every player takes a damage, and every flying creature takes a damage. So, for example, if I pay two green, then all flying creatures gain two damage, and each player takes two damage as well. So it's really an interesting card, and what makes it even more interesting in this deck is Spirit Link. So Spirit Link, of course, is a card that reads, you gain one life for each damage you dealt by the creature it enchants, 
right? So if I put a spirit link on the if bit for free and I use the if bit for free for one, I gain a life because it hurts me. I gain a life because it hurts my opponent and I gain a life because it hurts itself. And if my opponent happens to have some flying creatures as well, I'm also gaining life for that. So before you know it, one activation of uh, if bit for free with the spirit link on it can actually give me three life, four life, five life. I mean, it can get out of hand very quickly. I think if bit for free is really a card that I've got to watch, you know, um, but maybe I won't even notice. We'll, we'll just have to see with these decks. Maybe my focus will go, go completely to the Fajorian Enchantress and I will forget all about the if bit. We'll just have to see. But I really like the fact that he's added like an extra trick in the deck. So it's not only about the Fajorian Enchantress. It's also, I guess, a little bit about the Rabbit Wombat, and it's even more so about uh, the If Biff or Freed. So, really nice to see a deck like this. Thank you, Victor, for bringing it to the table. Now, let's take a look at my deck, Dragon's Search. And here we see the deck that I am playing with today, Dragon's Search. And uh, like I said in the introduction, we're playing with Mana Burn today, and that's really how this deck came to be, because there are a few cards in old school that really rely and work on the mana burn mechanic. And if you cancel out mana burn, those cards cannot be used. And Power Search is one of them. Power Search in enchantment for two red. And it reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Power Search deals X damage to, to that player, where X is the number of untapped lands they controlled at the beginning of this turn. So you basically get punished for the amount of lands that you haven't used. And if you play without mana burn, you can simply tap those lands take out the mana from those lands and you don't have to take any damage for it. But when you play with mana burn, that is no longer possible. So every time you do that, you get damage. Now, when you look at the rest of my deck, it's really kind of built around that power surge idea because I'm playing with Dragon Whelp, Sheevan Dragon and Granite Gargoyle. And those are all creatures that I can just pump my excess red mana into. And when you look at my mana base, you can see that I've only got four basic lands that are for basic planes that I cannot use to pump my dragons, right? So I can use all my red sources, my city of brasses, my plateaus, my mountains, I can all use them to pump my dragons. And of course, you know, this, the one strip mine, I can just use to destroy the land of my opponent if I want to. And um, that one Mishra's Factory that's in the deck is also a great outlet. Now, the reason I'm only playing with one Mishra's Factory, by the way, is because of the format. So there are quite some specific rules. One of them is that uh, Mishra's Factory is restrict it with the rule set that we're playing today. So if you're curious about the rule set, check the description below. I'll have all the details in there and a link where you can find the rules and all that stuff. But um, looking at the rest of this deck, so what I want to do is get that power search, use my excess mana to pump my dragons, right, and deal even more damage. If we kind of ignore the power search, then the rest of the deck is, is your red, white flyers, but then there are no white flyers, right? So we see all the red dragons. And then of course, I'm using the white control package to kind of deal with difficult situations. So I've got the Swords to Plow series, which, which is simply the best removal of creatures, right? In old school magic, it's just so powerful. One white and it removes a creature from the game. It's insane at instant speed. And then maybe more important in this deck are the disenchants. And why are the disenchants so important? because I'm dealing damage with red sources. If my opponent gets to cast a COP red, I need to be able to destroy it, right? And that's why the three disenchants come in. In my sideboard, I have an extra disenchant, by the way, in case my opponent is going to board in the COP red. So I'll make sure I play with four instead of with three, because I need to get rid of those COPs or else I simply cannot win the game, right? Um, so what else is there in the deck? Of course, there's a healthy portion of burn because I'm playing with red two disintegrates, a full playset of lightning bolts, including a beautiful signed revised lightning bolt. I'm really proud and happy that I that I own one. Um, and also I'm playing with two earthquakes, of course. Earthquake, a really good, good uh, card in my deck because I only have flyers, so I'm not gonna hit my creatures, but hopefully I am gonna hit uh, the creatures of my opponent. And if I can't hit the creatures of my opponent, then at least I can simply deal damage with my earthquake. So, uh, but in this case, in this matchup, Maybe I can use it to kill some Fajorian Enchantresses and some Wombats. Who knows, you know? <laughs> I mean, sounds like fun. Um, okay, so this is the deck that I'm playing with today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Old School Magic and Mana Burn. Do you think uh, Mana Burn should be allowed in all rule sets? What are the pros? What are the cons? Because I think there's something to say for both sides, right? Um, but it's, it's interesting from time to time to play different rule sets and try out different things. Also, let me know what you think of my deck, Dragon's Surge, and what you think of the deck of my opponent, of course, Victor, his Fajuran Enchantress Brew. Okay, so these, these are the decks that we're playing with today. Now, let's go.
to the games. Game number one with Victor on the left, and I'm playing on the right. And there he goes, starting with a Lana Elves passing turn here, and I'm starting with a Mistress Factory and passing turn. Pretty good start, I guess, for uh, for Victor. Hopefully he can ramp up into a Vajuran Enchantress in his second turn. There's a Plains. Let's see what he can do. Attacking me, going to 19. And passing turn, I believe. Playing a Mountain. Probably not going to attack exactly with the Mistress Factory because I'm playing against a player who has access to white. It's just too dangerous. You get Disenchant, you get Swords, and before you know it, you're behind on the land count. Look at this. Pretty good turn 3 for Victor with the Urnum Jin playing a Plateau. Hopefully I have Swords to Plows here. I'm probably just going to wait until the combat step. Let's hope I have one or else I'm going to take a beating here. In turn number four. Ooh, there's a Spirit Link attacking in response. There is the Swords, and it's great, of course, because he also loses his Spirit Link here. That's always a dangerous move when you play with uh, Enchant Creatures, that you can have this two-for-one scenario. And I'm playing a City of Brass. Right now, I could attack with the Factory because the Plains is tapped at the moment. Exactly, that's what I'm doing. Attacking with the 2-2, two -two, and he's taking the damage. Now he's on 22. Of course, he got 4 life because of that uh, Swords earlier in the game. There's another Force played by Victor. What can he do here? 5 mana. No Vajuran Enchantress yet. That's, of course, vital for his deck. Once he gets one on the, on the battlefield, there's an Aspect of Wolf. Again, kind of risky, right? If I have a Lightning Bolt, for example, looks like I don't. He's attacking me now. An Aspect of Wolf gives um, plus one, plus one for every two forests. And there's an Earthquake. So we're both going to get some damage. And I guess the Lunar Elves is dead as well. So my opponent Victor here on 19. I'm going to go down to 14. And I haven't really done much. I haven't played Dragon Whelp, no Sheevan Dragon, no Granite Gargoyle. So hopefully I can find some creatures later in this game. And playing out of planes and deciding to attack. I'm probably attacking now because I feel that I have more than enough mountains. And if it can eat up a sword like it does now, it's not too bad because then later when I'm playing out a creature, I have a bigger chance of my creature to actually survive. So later in the game, I don't really mind as much um, to trade like a Mishra's Factory for a Disenchant or a Swords. There we see a Soul Ring from Victor passing turn. Playing another mountain. And just pass. Wow. I wonder what's in my hand. Could it be just a lot of lands? Could that be it? I mean, I have enough mana to cast a Shivan. There is another forest. And Victor passing turn here. He's got two cards in hand. Draw for turn. Another mountain. Wow. I'm mean, just going to like play a huge Disintegrate or something at a certain point in this game and win it. Not really a lot happening. No Power Surge, no Dragons, nothing. Just passing turn here. Let's see what Victor can do. And he's also passing turn. Three cards in hand. And of course this is difficult with Victor's deck because he wants to have a creature that he can play his enchant creatures on, but... He doesn't have one, so we're just kind of passing turn, and I'm just playing out lands, and that's it. Look at me go. So many lands now. Victor's grabbing his hand, so maybe he has something. There's a Savannah. Tapping three. Okay, there's a Vajuran Enchantress, the O2 creature that allows Victor to draw a card every time he casts an enchantment. So let's start casting some enchantments. So Holy Strength, in response, there is a Bolt, but he can take a card from it. And I believe that's what we're discussing. So he can draw a card, I believe, from the Enchantress. And let's see what else Victor can do here. You kind of know when, you know, when you're playing against the white and the red deck and he's not really, you know, the opponent is not really doing anything, being me, he probably has or a lot of lands or just a lot of removal in hand or maybe both. 
So I'm probably having a disenchant in hand, maybe another bolt and some lands, right? That's probably what I have. If I would have had a creature, oh, okay, what are we going to do here? A huge disintegrate. And uh, how much damage is this? A lot of damage. And I'm also taking damage because of my own City of Brass. And now the life total of Victor has gone down to 10. And I, th I think I'm probably going to play another Burn Spell next turn. Uh, it's not the most exciting game if I do, but it does give me the victory in game one. I'm not doing it, it seems. Passing turn here. Okay, playing a Bolt at the end of Victor's turn. Going to 7. Untapping. And yeah, there it is. The other Disintegrate in the deck. Playing 2 in total. And that's it. You know, sometimes you have games like this. Uh, all I can say is I'm hoping that game number two will be more exciting. We're going to go into our sideboards and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So my opponent, Victor, is on the play here after losing that first one. There is a forest. Do we see another Lunar Elves like we saw in game one? No, but there is a Wild Grove. So the Enchant Land... And that means that when he taps the forest, he gets an extra forest, so he can make two mana with one single land. That's kind of nice. Can he now cast a Fajurin Enchantress? Looks like he can. He's just passing turns stuck on a one lander. Okay, there is a power surge. That's kind of nice because now I get to show the power surge. So the power surge means that for every land that Victor hasn't spent at the beginning of his turn that's not tapped, uh, he takes the damage. So I believe I'm now explaining it to him. So that means he's going to 19 because it's not tapped there. So he's a Vanna. Hopefully he can use both of his lands so that he doesn't take any damage. There's a Vajurn Enchantress. This is kind of nice. And this is more the game that I was hoping for. And tapping two here. Going to cast a Felver Stone. And I'm going to cast a Disenchant on the Wild Grove. So I'm trying to keep him low on the mana. And passing turn here. Let's see what's going to happen. So no damage for Victor because he spent all his mana. Another Savannah. So it's uh, it's good news for him that he's top decking. Okay, there's an Aspect of Wolf. little glitch here for him. But um, Aspect of Wolf on the Fajurin Enchantress. And that's going to protect her against the Bolts. Because it's now a 1-4. Uh, a attacking me for 1. And passing turn. So there's one untapped land. So that means probably next turn he's going to take 1 damage. There is a Dragon Whelp and a Plains and Passing Turn here. So he's taking one damage for that unused land. And remember, Power Search also works for me. So I'm also going to take a damage next turn for that Plains. Unless, of course, I can use it in his turn, for example, casting a Swords to Plowsiers. There is an If Biff a Freed, a 3 3 flyer. And for one green, it deals one damage to each creature with flying and each player. So that means that next turn he can potentially kill my Dragon Whelp if he wants to. And I'm going to take on my turn, taking a damage from my own Power Search, dropping to 18, attacking right now. And I'm not expecting him to block, actually, dealing 2 damage, not using my red mana to pump the Whelp. Or am I? Okay, so I'm asking him to wait for a second, trying to decide what I'm going to do. So he's going to take damage, playing a Swords to Plowsiers on the If Biff of Freed. Interesting, and that kind of shows... How much respect I have for the If Biff Freed. It's really like this kind of dangerous creature, and I don't want him to use it to blow up my flyers. Obviously, I know that Fijuren Enchantress also plays a huge role, but you know, Fijuren, I'm kind of looking forward to kind of see it work. So let's see what Victor is going to do. Playing another planes, tapping another Fijuren Enchantress. Uh-oh, he's going to draw tons and tons of cards now. Spirit Link, going to draw two for that because he has two Fijuren Enchantresses. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think he forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> I said you can actually draw two now. Let's see what else he can do. He doesn't have any flyers. That is the problem. He needs a web. If you can just cast a web. Oh, there's a web. Oh, that's so cool. So web plus O plus two. And it kind of gives a giant spider ability to a creature. So reach, right? What's, what's it called today? So that is pretty cool. So let's have a look. That for your enchantress is actually... A two four, a two six with with uh, a life link, right? So it's two six, and for every damage it deals, Victor gains life. Okay, there's a disenchant probably on the web. I can't believe I've I've got a game where I'm actually disenchanting a web. How cool is that? Attacking now, of course, using um, my mountains here, dealing seven damage to Victor. He's gonna drop to twelve. 
At least he's used all his mana, so he's not taking any damage from the Power Surge. And I wonder, he needs to do something against my Flying Force. Another Enchantress. Tapping. Does he at least have a Swords or something? Another Spirit Link drawing tons and tons of cards. If he can find another web, he plays two webs in total. Tapping two here. Casting a Sylvan Library again, drawing three cards. I mean, that card drawing engine is just insane right now. And he's, he's probably going to attack with the Enchantress, right? The Enchantress got uh, two power in total, so he gets four life for that. He's going to go back to 16. That's actually kind of nice. Wow. I mean, Victor is really in this. I think that, that Spirit Link, double Spirit Link, is really helping here. If I can just find a Swords to Plowsiers... Attacking here, interestingly enough, not attacking with my other Dragon Whelp. That is an interesting choice. Passing turn here, I wonder what I'm going to do. A lot of unspent mana on my side. The for Journey Enchantress is a 2-4, so that means that I'm keeping my Dragon Whelp at bay to possibly block the Enchantress. There is a Wild Grove, so again he can draw 3 cards. And of course, with the Sylvan, he can keep putting enchantments on top of his deck so that he gets to activate the Fajuran Enchantresses. That's always a great combo, Sylvan Library, Fajuran Enchantress. Now let's see, what can he do? He does have a lot of mana, though. And that Power Surge could kind of kill him if he's not careful enough. Another aspect of Wolf. That means it's going to be bigger. And my, uh, my Dragon Ball won't be able to kill the Enchantress if he decides to attack with it. So that's actually great for my opponent here. Not so good for me, of course. I'm on 16, Victor's on 13. If he's gonna swing in, I mean, if we look, it's now a four, seven. It's a four, seven now with Life Link. Double, double Spirit Link, I should say. Because, I mean, Spirit Link works slightly different than Life Link, but, you know, just to make it easy for myself, I'm just gonna call it Life Link. And uh, he's on 21 now. Oh, there's a Sarah Angel. This game is slipping away from me. It's slipping away big time. And uh, now he's got a discard. He discards his uh, one of his Rejourney Enchantresses here. Wow. And that makes sense. So of course, I'm putting uh, the red mana into the Dragon Whelp so that I don't take any excess damage from my Power Surge. But I am taking two for the two planes that are on, that are there. And I mean, I really need to find a way to destroy some of the creatures here. And I think that Fajuran is the most important. The Fajuran with all the enchantments. But it looks like I'm not finding a single Swords to Plowsiers here. Well, I found one actually, but I used it on the Ifbif Ifrit earlier in the game and it's a nice it's a nice show oh aspect of wolf on the sarah angel that's really cool victor man i like it nice to know by the way uh, that drawing cards with for journey shepherds is optional and here we see the rabbit wombat that is pretty sweet it's really nice to see these cool creatures and i mean how often do you see an, an aspect of wolf being played on a sarah angel that's just really really cool I mean, you know, I can, I, I don't mind getting, getting killed by, uh, by this army. I think the army is really cool. Oh, to make matters worse for me, he's casting uh, the sword supplies here on one of my whelps, the swords that I need so much and that I've been waiting for for so long. But it's not coming, it seems. And now he's attacking with the Vajuran Enchantress, and I guess the Sarah Angel still has summoning sickness. And it looks like I'm just chump blocking. Oh, blocking and playing double bolt to kill it. Wow. So I'm really investing a lot here in trying to kill the Fajuran Enchantress. But it's not enough. Now, it's a little unclear what happens here. So I am actually going to show you the original footage. So you can hear us talk and then you actually know what, uh, what happened. Because he forgot to take his Fajuran Enchantress out. So I'm just gonna show you the original um, recordings with the original audio for a second. Um, well, and I'll attack with the Enchantress and the Sarah. So the Enchantress is eight. Six, eight, and seven, seven. Eight, right, the Enchantress? Check, yeah, yep, six, eight. 
Uh, I'm pretty much dead anyway, but I can. I'm gonna bump it to three three. I'm gonna block the enchantress, so it's gonna take three damage. Okay. And then I'm gonna yep. double bolt it. Okay. So um, I'll gain my life. So I'll get twelve life. Doesn't matter. You gain tons. And, <laughs> I have a lot of life. And how much damage do I get from the enchanter from um, the Sarah? Uh, seven. Seven from the Sarah. Seven. So I'm gonna go to five, and then my power surge is also gonna hurt, hurt me. So I need a miracle. Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Your turn. I think the only card that can not even save me, because I'm going to get two damage from the search, I'm going to go to three. I think I need at least a balance. Okay, so disintegrate. Can cast a disintegrate for six, but that's not enough to kill your angel, is it? Oh, and your, your enchantress. No, is, she's seven, seven. Your enchantress is dead, by the way, the one. Ah, uh, yes. All that stuff's gone. Yep, yep. Yeah, Triple maybe balls. for the... So now we know what happened, right? So I'm playing Disintegrate on his life total for the simple reason that I cannot kill his angel. It's kind of like my last little straw. There's nothing I can do. Uh, the Disintegrate is simply not enough. I needed a balance. Couldn't find one and passing turn now. And now Victor is uh, just probably going to kill me with a Sarah Angel with an Aspect of Wolf on it. Which is actually pretty cool. So let's see. going to draw for turn. I'm tapped out. Kill me now, Victor. I'm ready for it. And there is the angel bringing in the pain. And I'm dead. I'm just checking. Always want to know. Maybe that was a balance. But, uh, Victor, you're winning this one. And that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three. There we go. Starting with a basic mountain. And uh, that was really an interesting game number two. And uh, you could really see the power of a journey Shatters, right? Especially when you have multiple on the board. So much card advantage. And there was nothing I could do anymore. There is a forest. Well, we see some ramping happening here for Victor. Wild Grove, Lana Elves. Nope. Just passing turn. Looking at my hand, playing a second mountain. Maybe a Felber Stone here. So I can ramp up a little bit. That's nice. Maybe the next turn, hopefully for me, a Dragon Whelp. And uh, the nice thing about my deck, by the way, it's uh, fully made out of reprints. So it's got revised 4th edition and Chronicles in there. And uh, apart from the dual lens, it's uh, very budget friendly. So if you like the deck, you could consider uh, building it yourself as well. There is a plateau, and let's see if I can cast Dragon Ball Tapping 3 instead. Granite Gargoyle, the 2-2 flyer for 1 red. You can give it plus 0, plus 1. A card that I personally think is a little bit underplayed. You do see it now slowly gaining in popularity. I just think uh, the 1 red and the 2 make it quite easy to cast. And uh, sometimes it's really tough to kill because of that uh, plus 0, plus 1 pump ability. There is another forest, and Victor not playing out an Enchantress. It looks like he's just going to pass turn. That is good news for me, of course, but not great news for Victor. It looks like we're talking a little bit about the options. Maybe he's in the tank as well, thinking, what can I do here? But it looks like he's going to pass. And that means I can start swinging in with my Granite Gargoyle. Such a beautiful creature. Great flavor text, by the way. If you don't know it, check it out. Check out the flavor text of the Granite Gargoyle. And try to pronounce the cookbook. Attacking here for two. I should say the author of the cookbook. And Victor is going to go to 18. There's a Plains. Let's see if I can cast some more Flyers. Tapping three. Another Gargoyle. Okay, another Gargoyle. Another 2-2 two -two Flyer. And I think, I mean, what Victor really needs here is uh, an If Biff Afrit. That would be kind of nice. It would give him a blocker and the ability to kill both of my Gargoyles if he times it right. Instead, he's playing... Another creature, the Urnum Jinn 4-5 Arabian Nights Powerhouse. 
It doesn't have flying, so I can still deal four damage through the air. It does mean I have to probably take four next turn from the Urnum. But I'm ahead. I'm feeling good. I'm playing red. Probably have some burn as well. So bring him to 14 and passing turn. I'm ho I hope that I can still, you know, cast a Sheevan Dragon. That would be kind of nice. The connection being a little bit flaky at the side of Victor, by the way. And uh, using one of my Timmy Talks buttons to show that uh, the Gargoyle now has Forced Walk. Because the Urnum, of course, during the upkeep has to give target creature of the opponent Forced Walk. Doesn't really matter much because it already has flying, so Victor couldn't block it anyway. I wonder what he can do, showing that I have two cards in hand, no three cards in hand. Let's see. And Victor tapping two green here, casting an Aspect of Wolf. Okay, now it's actually kind of getting beefy. It gets plus two, plus three. Ooh, in response, sorts to Plowshares. Ah, oh, that is pretty brutal. And I think, you know, what you saw in game one and you see it now in game three is using that Swords to Plows here to kind of, you know, get card advantage going. It's so brutal. There is a Sylvan Library. At least that's something. Do I also have a Disenchant for the Sylvan? I hope not. For Victor, I Disenchant. Sylvan's gone. It looks like I've got full control. And that's something that I didn't have in game two, you know. Remember, I used the Swords to Plows here on the if -bif, and then it kind of slipped away from me the game. And I couldn't find another source to kill that uh, really big Fajorian Enchantress. And that that eventually cost me the game. But now we're in game three. Things are looking really good for me. Playing even more creatures. A Dragon Whelp, 2-3. And for one red, you can give it plus one, plus oh. It's really good. One of the things I like about the Dragon Whelp, by the way, is that um, it can kill itself if your opponent is trying to play Control Magic on it. So I kind of like that because um, you can pump it plus one plus oh for one red and you can do that three times. You can make it five three. If you pump it more than that, then it's going to destroy itself at the end of turn. So when somebody plays a control magic in response, you can just blow it up. Let's see if Victor can do anything in response. You're tapping three. Okay, there's a journey Enchantress. That's something. Hope for, hope for Victor that I don't have a bolt, for example. And okay, playing a web. That's actually not too bad. With the web, he can at least block one of my granite gargoyles and take two less damage. He's still on 14, you know. That means that he's not going down too much next turn. He can probably have one or maybe more turn or maybe two turns if he's lucky. What can he do here? Looking at his options, only one forest. Maybe he's got a wild growth in hand or, okay, playing a land still for turn. That's a Savannah, I believe. Tapping the Savannah. Casting his swords. Okay, okay. This is not too shabby. And I'm pumping it up, so I gain at least some more life. So I'm now gaining four life. Going to go up to 24. And untapping. Drawing for turn. Only two cards in hand. So, you know, maybe Victor can stabilize here. Ah, disenchant. Again on the web. Second time I'm disenchanting a web in this match. <laughs> I've never disenchanted a web before this match. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Attacking for four, that means that he's going to go to ten, but this is unfortunate. My hand is empty though, showing it to him. So at least that's something for Victor, you know. If he can, like I said, at least get the if biff. Although it's going to be hard to use the if biff to kill the Granite Gargoyles because I've got so much red mana now available to me, but at least with an if biff he's got a 3-3 flyer that he can block one of the gargoyles with. And that's gonna gonna stop the bleeding somewhat. He's on 10. He needs to do something against the flyers. And I guess here you can see also another like a plus for the gargoyle, the fact that it can pump itself. I mean usually when you play green your opponent has like a hurricane, right? Um, and it's really difficult. A hurricane for two, you can just kill all your 2-2 two -two flyers, but not when you when your 2-2 two -two flyers are gargoyles and you have some mana open. Tapping one white, I guess. Playing Spirit Link. This is not something you want to do, but if you're desperate, desperate times call for desperate measures, right? So Spirit Link on an 0-2 creature 
At least it gives him a card back. Let's see what he can do with that. Could have also decided to play the Spirit Link on, um, on a Gargoyle, of course. Playing an Urnum. 4-5. Let's see what he can do with that. Tapping two red here. Is there a power surge coming? There is a power surge. Ooh. And that is that is difficult for Victor because he's already so low and he's probably going to take an extra damage for the untapped four. So that means he's going to go to five. And uh, I'm really happy that my power surge is working. You see my fist there. Uh, he's going to attack me, though, for four, but that's not really going to matter. I'm on 24 still. He needs, again, he needs something to deal with the Flyers. He also needs to tap out or else he's going to die because of the Power Surge. This is really a tough spot for Victor to be in. I guess it starts with at least playing out in Shaman, try to draw an extra card, or maybe find another sword, take care of one of the Flyers. This is going to be tough. He only has one white as well. I mean, maybe that is difficult for him also. Maybe he's got a Sarah Angel in hand, but simply can't play it out. Okay, so there we see a Holy Strength. So that means the Enchantress now 1-4. He can attack with the Enchantress. Gain a life, go to 6. Of course, also attack with the Urnum. Exactly, because he can't block with it anyway. So I'm going to go to 19. He's going to gain a life, go to 6. But he needs to do more than that. I mean, the Power Search is on there as well. Okay, this is good. Tapping some more mana. Another for Jern Enchantress. Probably the card that he just top deck with that Holy Strength. Or else he would have played out Enchantress and then the Holy Strength. So now he's passing turn and I'm using my mana that, my red mana that I have from the Plateaus to feed the, those into my Gargoyle. So I'm, I only take one damage from the Power Surge instead of three damage from the Power Surge. So here you can kind of see my strategy working. This is what I want to do. Use that excess mana for my power surge, and now I'm gonna attack. He's gonna go to two, and then he's actually gonna die. Or not. Yeah, he's gonna go to two, and he's got two untapped lands, so that means power surge should do it, and I'm showing it to him. <laughs> power surge. So yeah, it's always nice to see a plan work, and to see my power surge actually uh, doing some, uh, some work here, and I don't play with Power Search often because I don't play with Mana Burn often, but I really enjoy uh, playing with Power Search, playing with this deck. I think it's quite an interesting card. The wording is just so incredibly old school. It's got that old school feel, so I really like it. And also thank you, uh, Victor, for bringing your cool Enchantress Brew to the table. I always love to play against Enchantress. It's just always interesting to see everybody's take on it, and you, you know, I feel for Journey Enchantress is, is one of those cards that everybody tries to crack so hard because the fact that it allows you to draw cards in green makes it so powerful. But yeah, to make a deck that really works with Enchantress, that is really, really, really a difficult task. Uh, but thank you for trying. Thank you for bringing it to the table. Um, this was another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you thought of both of these decks, what you thought of both of these games. I would love to hear from you. And also, you're helping the channel by leaving a comment, leaving a like, clicking the notification bell. Apparently, there is one. All that helps. Also, becoming a sub. If you're not a subscriber yet, all that helps making the channel grow and helping me creating this content for you. Another thing that you can do is you can become a sponsor of the show by joining Timmy Talks on Patreon. And that means that you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, to Timmy Talks tournaments, and your name will be listed in the end scroll. How cool is that? Um, and it already starts with $1 a month. So there's probably a card popping up right now. Click on there and that will take you to Timmy Talks Patreon page. Have a look, maybe it's something for you. And now let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, the amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks.
Ik het als fik het als somber gezien.